Okay, here we have the back side of the uh, Crossfire. Uh, some of the things that you'll notice is obviously your, your hopper, which is accessed from the front, your safety tag with your serial number on it, so you can use that for your warranty card. You're going to have a shield here. What you're, what you're going to have is you're going to have chimney that's going to come off this uh, uh, four inch outlet right here, going straight up through your damper, so you're going to have a shield right here. The vacuum sensor is located right here. What that's going to do is that's going to allow the uh, stove to recognize when there's a flue blockage or blockage inside the stove and cut off your auger motor. The exhaust blower, over here in the center, you're going to have your auger motor, the room air blower. The stir rod motor is located directly below the room air blower. The drive shaft for the stir rod motor and chain are located next to that. Over here, you've got your intake. This is a three inch intake that you can use to get outside air to your stove. It's very important that you put outside air to your stove. Uh, your stove has to breathe properly and trying to take all that from inside the house uh, can be problematic with the stove. So always uh, make sure that you've got a uh, outside uh, fresh air kit on your stove, running a three inch aluminum pipe off your, uh, off your intake to the outdoors. And of course, you're going to have your, your exhaust. This is going to be a four inch exhaust because we're going to be running in most all cases, this is going to go above 10 feet. So we want to start right off the bat with a four inch outlet. And this outlet can actually be removed uh, if you need to do some cleaning on the uh, chimney. Your power outlet is going to attach right here on this side of the stove for your power cord. And also right next to your power outlet, you're going to have your uh, thermostat hookup. It's going to be a thermostat pod right here. Also, your fuse pod is located right below your power cord. So the way the stove is shipped to you, it's going to have a loop on it if you're not using a thermostat. If you're uh, using a thermostat, you're going to remove the loop and connect your uh, thermostat wire right here. Another feature that you'll have on the Crossfire are actually leveling legs. There's one located on each side of the back of the stove. Actually, the leveling legs are a bolt. They thread right into the base of the uh, stove, the insert, and you're going to uh, thread those down if need be to uh, level the stove out. You're going to have one on this side and then one right here. One of the other uh, maintenance issues that you'll have to do on the Crossfire is actually oiling the motor. The only motor on the Crossfire that needs to be oiled periodically is your room air blower. There's going to be two uh, clear tubes on the side of the motor here and here that you're going to actually use a uh, uh, sewing machine oil uh, works real well if you've got a longer tube that you can get and squirt in there just once a year is all that's going to take the rest of your motors are all sealed your auger motor your stir rod motor underneath your uh, room air blower your uh, exhaust blower those are all sealed motors so those don't need to be oiled okay on your uh, exhaust outlet on the back of the Crossfire. There's a couple of different ways that that can be done. Um, one of the ways is to use a four inch stove adapter, which would attach right to your stove. And then at that point, you can go ahead and use your, uh, your chimney that has the connectors on the ends and connect that up and run that up through your uh, chimney as need be. The other way that you can do that is some of your uh, stainless steel four inch liners don't have the ends on them and they'll easily slip over the outside of this and you can clamp that down and, uh, and silicone with some high temperature silicone and get that sealed off really nice. So either way is fine and uh, with whatever uh, kind of materials that you have to do that with. Okay, this is the 110 degree proof of fire heat sensor. Also right here, you're going to have your vacuum port coming off of your vacuum switch you can see that the hose comes off. Sometimes this port right here will get clogged. You can clean that out with a pipe cleaner or any uh, small wire that you can run through that and keep that cleaned out. Uh, what that'll do if that gets clogged is it's going to shut your uh, auger motor off. And you'll want to maintain that about once every uh, 30 days. Right above your proof of fire heat sensor is a room air heat sensor here on the back firewall. Up above the uh, 
room air blower on the back firewall, you will have your uh, high limit switch. What this switch uh, purpose is, is to shut the unit down in case of an overheating situation.